All right, guys, uh, welcome back and great to see everyone today. I want to um, continue thinking about position velocity and acceleration, uh, uh, which are related, as we talked about today, uh, particularly with the derivative. So let's look at this one problem. I'll give you a minute to read it um, and go right ahead. Okay, so we're going to kind of think about this um, at a very basic level. There's the velocity. That's the instantaneous uh, velocity of this particle that's just moving along the x-axis. So moving left to right, right to left, um, and it starts at 2. What that means is it's moving, here's, let's say, the x-axis, and here's 0. It's going to start here at 2, right? And it's going to move uh, such that the velocity at any given moment is... Uh, given by this green velocity function, okay? So the first question is, what is the acceleration at four seconds, right? So recall the relationship amongst position, velocity, and acceleration. And if you don't recall that, it's, um, you know, the derivative of position is the velocity, and the derivative of velocity is the acceleration, right? Change of velocity with respect to time instantaneous is acceleration. So if I'm thinking about the acceleration at four seconds, at that moment, that's the instantaneous acceleration, I need to find the derivative of the velocity, right, which is my acceleration function. And to do so, I'm going to use what rule? That's right, the chain rule, right? So I'm going to think of the inner function as being pi over 3t, the outer function as being sine of x or sine of t. And I'm going to differentiate first the sine to get a cosine, keep the pi over 3t times now the derivative with respect to time, we're differentiating with respect to time, of pi over 3 times t, which is just pi over 3. Right? So therefore, the acceleration function at any instant, the acceleration will be pi over 3 times the cosine of that same pi over 3 times t. Okay? So if I want to find, let's say, the uh, acceleration at 4 seconds, I just plug a 4 in. So the acceleration at 4 is pi over 3 times the cosine of 4 pi over 3. And now i got a unit circle it. So, hmm, what is the cosine of 4 pi over 3? Well, remember pi over 3 is 60 degrees, right? So 4 pi over 3 is 4 of those 60 degrees are 240. So I'm going to rip right here. That's about 240. There's my 4 pi over 3. I'm going to create my reference triangle. And the x value of the terminal point is going to be the cosine of that angle, 4 pi over 3. So there's the angle, 4 pi over 3, 240 degrees, which makes this 60 degrees, right? And the side across from that, that's root 3 over 2, but it's going to be negative. The side opposite the 30 is going to be 1 half, but that's going to be negative 2 because I'm in the third quadrant. So anyway, the terminal point is negative 1 half, negative root 3 over 2. And that's right, the cosine is the x value of that terminal point. All right, so therefore, the cosine of 4 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. So the acceleration at 4 is pi over 3 times negative 1 half. And that gives me negative pi over 6. Okay. And let's see, they don't really give me any labels, so I'm going to just say that's, uh, there's my acceleration at 4 seconds. And I'll just say that's units per time squared, because right? acceleration is per square units in time. Okay, so I'm just differentiating velocity to get the acceleration, instantaneous acceleration, and then I'm plugging in a 4. Okay, so that's not so bad. Okay, so for part B, let's give that a little read. I'm going to consider this statement. Mm -hmm. The velocity is decreasing, the speed is increasing. Ooh, now here's where it gets a little complicated. Okay, which one is true? Which is not true? Hmm. I'm going to use a calculator to help me out with this, and I'm going to show you a little trick, a little trick of the trade. Okay. Velocity we have, we got that pretty good, sine of pi over 3t, right? And then it asks me about the speed of the object. Now remember, speed is increasing if 
both acceleration and velocity have the same sign, right? We talked about that today. So speed is increasing if acceleration and velocity, two forces, I guess, are acting in the same direction. They're both positive, both negative. So I need to know what the acceleration is. I already got that with the chain rule, the derivative. Okay. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to use my calculator to answer this question. So I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to pull up my handy dandy calculator. And I'm going to make sure I'm in radian mode. All right. All right. So I want to be in radian mode because velocity and acceleration are uh, in uh, sines and cosines of pi over t, pi over 3. So I'm going to go into mode, make sure you're in radian mode. We always really should be, almost always in calc is in radian mode anyway. And in y1, I'm going to put the velocity, which is sine of uh, pi over 3. Pi is its own button. Where it go? There it is. Over 3x, or t, same thing. And then I'm going to put the derivative over here. Now, I, I can do one of two things now. Okay, I can put the actual derivative in, or watch this trick. I know what the derivative is, the acceleration, but I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to put in math and derive. Now what that does is it takes the derivative with respect to x of my velocity, which is y1. So I'm just going to put variables, y variables, function y1. So that's going to take the derivative of what's in y1, which is velocity, give me acceleration, not at four seconds or two seconds, but at any moment, x equals x. So what this is going to do for me is it's going to find the derivative. It won't tell me what it is. I already know what it is. We already got it. Acceleration. And it's going to graph it. I'm going to press zoom trig. The blue is my velocity. The red is my acceleration. Okay. Blue is velocity. Red is the derivative of the velocity, which is acceleration. Okay. Now, it's asking between three and four and a half seconds. So I'm going to go to my window. I'm going to start at three, actually a little before three. How about 2.5? And I'm going to end my x or t value at a little bit after four and a half. We'll just say five. Okay, so it's just going to give me a, a, a view of the window that I'm looking at. Okay. Now remember, blue is velocity. So the velocity is the blue graph. And the red graph is my acceleration. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to pull that back up. Blue is velocity, red is acceleration. So between three and five seconds, it says the velocity of the object is decreasing. Hmm. Well, that has to do with the acceleration being negative. So between three and four and a half seconds, which essentially we're looking at, Maybe I should do exactly three and exactly four and a half seconds. Is the blue velocity change, which is noted by the red acceleration function, negative? So yes, look at the whole acceleration function. It's negative. All right, it's below the x-axis. Right? The y value is negative one point whatever here. Still negative, still negative acceleration, still negative acceleration, still negative acceleration. So that means, yes, negative acceleration means that the velocity is decreasing. Agree? The change of, of velocity, which is acceleration, is negative. So therefore, if the change of velocity, acceleration, is negative, then the velocity itself is decreasing. So that's true. Now, the second question is a little harder, and it says, well, what about the speed of the object? Is that increasing or decreasing? Now, we talked a lot about that today in class, and the speed of an object will be increasing. Remember, speed is the absolute value of the velocity. When acceleration and velocity are both positive or both negative. So is it the case also, we know that the acceleration is negative, over the whole interval three to four and a half. Right? We have that graphed in front of it. It being the acceleration is below the x-axis. But what is the velocity on that same interval? 
Oh, right. It's also negative. Ooh, so the velocity on that interval is negative, right? which essentially means this particle is moving to the left between three and four and a half seconds. And on that very same time interval from three to four and a half seconds, the acceleration is also negative. Okay, so now I can say, ooh, wee, look at this. Since on the interval, zero, excuse me, three to four and a half seconds, right? that's the same way of writing this interval time. I know that the acceleration is negative and the velocity is also negative. I just graph those, right? Therefore, the particle is speeding up just in the negative direction, the left direction, right? So for this part B, both of these statements are true. Statement one is true because the acceleration is negative, right? Which means the velocity is decreasing. Statement two is also true, but a little different, okay? A little different because speed is the absolute value of the velocity, and we talked that speed is increasing when the acceleration and velocity as signs, as directions, as forces, are both working in the same direction. Oh, well, three to four and a half seconds, acceleration is negative, and the velocity is negative, meaning, therefore, the particle is speeding up. So for part B, both are true. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you got a little bit out of it. Again, we're moving in teams throughout um, this next couple weeks. Uh, there's one other problem I'm going to ask for you to do for homework tonight, uh, and then we'll see you again tomorrow. Okay. Hope you're doing well, boys. Bye-bye.